Hello, Sue here from Sue's Door Broadmind Kitchen today and I've been having some great fun and games trying to record this video. So now I've referred it back to my phone because I tried to use my camera but I don't know why I can't use my camera at the moment but I'm going to have to sit down, take some time out and figure it all out. But at the moment I don't want to sit down figure it all out. I just want to do something. So what I want to do today is the carrot um, relish that I wanted to make with the raw carrots that I harvested about a week or so ago which have been sitting in the fridge for ages waiting. So I want to show you this little book that I've got. In fact I will show you all of them. So in here um, I have this, these little books that my son and his girlfriend bought me, Michael and Kim. So thank you Michael and Kim and they gave me this for Christmas. And I only got it the other week because um, obviously we couldn't see each other at Christmas. And I got this when um, I went to go and see my little new granddaughter, Penny May. And um, I went and visited my son obviously and picked this up. So in here are some really lovely recipes and you get these nice little sticks as well with a carrot on them and you can use them as bookmarks like that. And I'll show you the little box in a minute but it's over there, I can't quite reach it at the moment because I've just moved this table and I've had to shift the table but I will cut the video and I will get the little box and show you it but it's really lovely. So it's a lot of vegetarian dishes, things that you've done in, you know, you've got in your garden and then you want to cook with them. So it's got sort of different kinds of recipes. So I found this lovely little carrot relish recipe. And um, so let's do this recipe, okay? I've had to change a couple of things slightly because I haven't got the exact ingredients as always. I did try and get them, but it didn't happen. Anyway, so what you need for this recipe is 500 grams of carrots about a pound. I haven't even weighed these carrots. I don't care how much they weigh because I'm using them anyway. And then what you need is 250 mils or eight fluid ounces of ground nut oil. So I'm using roasted peanut oil and that is exactly 250 mils there. So we're gonna be using the whole bottle of this oil. And then it says you need one onion so I'm going to use one red onion, my onions aren't ready yet. Uh, one garlic clove, so we've got a garlic clove here, thinly sliced, a pinch of saffron threads. So I've got my saffron threads here in a little pot. And then it says you need one teaspoon of chilli paste. Right, I didn't buy any chilli paste, so what I've got is a harissa, which is like um, powder. And it's got like a mixture of, um, I'll read it to you, salt, cumin, chilli, coriander, garlic, mint, caraway and cayenne pepper. So I'm just going to use this instead of the paste because I haven't got that. And then it says you need 30 grams or one ounce of grated fresh root ginger. I haven't got that either. And what I was going to use was stem ginger. I know it's sweet but I just thought I would use a bit of that and then some salt and pepper. So it says here to cut the carrots into thin sticks and soak them in a bowl of salted water for 12 hours. Right, I've been soaking these carrots in this water for longer than 12 hours. Oh, can you see that? Um, I haven't washed them yet, but these are the ones that I just took out the polytunnel the other week and I've just soaked them in this water to keep them fresh. Look at all these beautiful leaves. Um, until I got round to making this recipe and I've also got some in here there's not many in this tin so what I'm going to do is just take out the ones I've got in here and put them in here and then I will just give them um, I will just do them all together but some of them didn't come out at all but, but they're only little, little carrots like this look they're like little that's quite a big one that isn't actually the same kind so it's a different kind of carrot but these are the sort of sizes, they're just called ball carrots and they're little and that's how big they actually are. So I thought these would make a really nice relish. So 
So what you need to do is cut them into thin sticks. So I'm going to have to cut these up into um, into things anyway. So I'm going to have to wash them first because they're a bit dirty. So I'll just crack on with that right now. I can't see with these glasses on because I can't see properly. So what we're going to do is just take off the tops. And with these, um, all the tops, I mean, we do eat some of them, but we can't eat all of them. There's way too many. I will just um, put them on the compost bin, because that's what I do with everything. So I will just compost them. And even the teeny weeny ones I will use in this recipe. So I'm just going to top and tail them a little bit. And then we'll cut them up. I mean, some of them are really tiny, so... Anyway, I hope you're all alright everybody and I'm doing a cooking video today and I'm quite amazed that I'm actually getting round to this because I keep putting it off and putting it off because I've been doing so many videos in the garden recently that I haven't done any videos indoors because um, the weather, I need to get out, I need to keep everything on top of everything. It's, you know, it's hard work, um, but it's not hard work, it's like never ending out in the polytunnel I have to keep on top of everything and yesterday I know I ended my video short um, I don't know well it was on the 21st of June the video yesterday the Monday the 21st of June day after my birthday and um, I needed to just finish the video because then we went off to have a lobster which was very lovely I must say, but kept repeating on us for hours later. <laughs> Probably wasn't a good idea to have it just before bedtime. Never mind. Anyway, I've got some strange looking carrot here. Look, looks like a little pair of legs and a shoe. So anyway, when you grow your own food, you get all different shapes and sizes. And this is the first recipe that I'm doing from our own homegrown carrots or any kind of vegetable actually. I have had I have been doing recipes with other vegetables, but this is the first one that I'm actually filming for you. Um, and I did say that I was going to do this in a video a while back when I first harvested the carrots. I said I would do this video. And that's what I want to do with a lot of my videos is when I harvest the things if it's worthy of being videoed, I will. Oh, that one's not worthy of being cut even. So I'm just trying to trim these up and then I'm just gonna slice them up a little bit. Not mad, because they're only tiny. I mean, when they're saying to slice carrots up, they're thinking that you've just got normal sized carrots. I mean, these are only little to begin with. So they're really tiny. I just, I just decided to grow these bald carrots because I just wanted to try out growing carrots in the polytunnel to see if they would actually grow um, before I headed long into normal carrots, which I do have out there now. So in one of the beds, I know you can just go and watch one of my videos where it says carrots, and um, in one of my beds I've now got just the normal F1 hybrid carrots. Uh, called resistor fly. Um, oh, this <laughs> oh, I could have just chopped all the tops off first, couldn't I? Instead of done it, doing it like this. Some of these are really small; they're not matured properly. But I just thought I would just um, harvest all of them at the same time because they were all in the same place, and um, I didn't think it was worth wasting a whole bed for tiny little carrots waiting for them to all be a sort of good size so I've just just pulled them all up so I've got me other carrots in there well not in the same place in a different bed and in that in the place of that bed I think I've put the broccoli so broccoli are now where these carrots were so I'm really on the ball of just as soon as something finishes I'm pulling it out and putting some else in straight away because as I said, as I said, this is all testing this year. Everything I'm doing is testing. I'm checking out what is the best way to use the polytunnel to its greatest extent and get the maximum amount of food out of it um, 
But I definitely think the more sort of delicate stuff, um, the peppers and the tomatoes and the lettuce and stuff like that is a good place to do it in the polytunnel. Um, I think brassicas, next year I will be putting all the brassicas outside, I think, uh, the cabbages and stuff. Maybe start them off just in the pots in the polytunnel, but then just plant them straight outside. Um, with some covering on, like some netting, so they don't get slaughtered outside. Um, but this year I have grown some brassicas inside, which I don't know if that's a good idea really. But anyway, we're living and learning, this is what we're doing, and these carrots are our like, first crop of the polytunnel really. I did do green beans, and I was going to show you what I'd done, how I blanched them, but it, I really didn't think it was that interesting because all I did was um, harvested them all, took them out of the, you know, of their shucks, and then I just um, basically blanched them and froze them, and they're now all in the freezer. And the other thing that I've got, oh, that's here somewhere. I might show you it is the the last of the green sprouting broccoli that I harvested which I still got in the fridge actually because in these tins that I put everything in everything stays fresh for weeks so they're still in the fridge but what I'm going to do is get them out and I'm just going to blanch them and put them in the freezer because um, we don't need them at the moment, so I thought I'd just blanch them. So we had a good clear out in the freezers um, two weeks ago, I think it was. And I've cleaned the ones inside the kitchen. And we've now got it on a sort of rotor of all the food that we're harvesting from the garden is going in the kitchen freezer. Um, and all of the everything else goes in either the big outdoor freezer which is in the garage or yeah in the outdoor freezer in the garage because we've managed to turn off one of the freezers because um to save money on on the electric uh, we've got another little freezer in the kitchen that um our day-to-day -day stuff goes in you know like your um things that you do, sausages maybe, a few sausages, some bacon, uh, some burgers, um, little things like that, that you might want to keep near you, um, not keep running out into the garage. And then, yeah, so all the garage food is, is like meat and stuff. So all that stuff's like in the garage, not taking up all the room. So we've organised all that, so we know, so as things start, you know, as I start doing all the harvesting for everything, I've got loads of room to put everything, to freeze it all, because obviously there's only me and my partner to come and eat all this food, and the whole point of this is to grow our own food, our own vegetables and stuff, not, not meat but you know, like our own vegetables and things. And then to, um, yeah, to grow all our own veg, basically. That's the whole point of this. Um, right, so I've done that. Oh, I don't know if there's even a pounds there of carrots, I don't know. Anyway, I could weigh them, couldn't I? I might weigh them. Hold on, I've got all this stuff now to get rid of. So that all this stuff that I've got here, you can't see it, all this, it's going to go on a compost bin basically, so I'm going to put it in my bucket because this is my bucket that we put on the compost bin. So all the kitchen waste, eggshells, anything, coffee grounds, they all go on the compost bin and now these will. So they won't get wasted, they get recycled. Right, so let's just put that there. So sorry, I might be a bit weird on the camera in the kitchen because I'm used to being in the garden now. It's very weird trying to come back in the kitchen. I can't remember what was the last time I actually done a food video. <laughs> so that's all the dirty water from the um, 
the carrots. I need to wash them actually. It's a bit dirty. And we'll just clear this mess up because um, I don't want bits of grit on our carrots. That might not be very nice. So I'm just going to wash them. I'm back. So I just went and washed the carrots because um, they were quite dirty actually. Because when I pulled them out of the earth, there was all worth all over them. I don't really want to read that. So what I'm going to do now is just quickly slice them up. Um, got bits of hair on them. Well, you know, they're a bit furry. I'll show it right now. So this is going to be quite a crunchy one. I'll have to get these bits of hair off. They're not hairs, you know, they're little roots, aren't they? So I'm going to cut them up really tiny because they're only tiny, tiny carrots anyway. So we're going to cut them. Because what you do is, you don't eat this right away. You let it marinate for a couple of days, which is why I needed to do it. Because uh, I needed to hurry up before the carrots decided to go start rotting, obviously. Because when you, when you um, grow your own food, it's a lot different to buying shop-bought food and the life expectancy is not as long. So you have to be quick, like if you're gonna bottle or whatever you're doing with it, you need to be quick doing it, you know, get the process going, pickling and stuff. So I will be pickling some onions because I doubt if we're gonna be eating all the onions that I'm growing at the moment. So I probably will pickle all them. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Can you see? Hold on, all these things in the way. There. Oh, this is a funny looking camera. It's got a, this on the end. <laughs> so you get all different shapes and sizes when you grow your own carrots. I did try and like make holes that, so they would try and grow a bit straight. But if they don't, it, didn't. it doesn't matter. When it's your own food, who cares? I wouldn't care if they sold misshapen food in the shop anyway. I mean, years ago, food was like that. Now everybody, they think that everybody wants all their food straight. I don't know where they got that idea from. I don't know, that is not normal. Food just grows in weird ways. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I just don't get it. This carrot was a carrot that I left in a pot that I didn't actually get in the ground. And that is one of the F1 hybrid carrots. But that's only little. That will be a normal sized carrot. But isn't it funny <laughs> that it's now part of these selection of carrots. So I'm cutting these up really small by the way because I want this relish. I just want the carrots tiny. I don't want great big lumps of carrot in it. I reckon it'll taste really nice. I need to try one of these bits of carrot. Hold on, I'm going to try this one. Hmm. Oh, I don't know. It's something about growing your own food. That is really lovely. Anyway, what I might do is fast forward this part of the video because I have a lot of carrots still to cut up and it might be a bit boring for you to watch me slicing up millions of bits of carrot for ages. So I'll fast forward this bit of the video. <laughs> Luckily, I went off camera because these onions, oh, I look like I've been crying. This onion I just chopped up, this red onion, is really, really strong. And even just standing there, it's still making my eyes water. It's a red onion, but my God, oh, my eyes are still like watering from it. Anyway. So on the board here, I've got my onion, my garlic, and root, red 
stem ginger. So I didn't have any normal ginger, so I thought I'd have stem ginger because I've got that. And I've got two like little round bits there. And I've chopped up all my carrots now to there. So that's all my carrots there. Um, and now we're gonna do the actual cooking. So we've got our saffron here and our harissa. Harissa, I think that's how you say it. And I was just gonna say, if you're allergic to nut oil, you could always use a really nice cold pressed rapeseed oil or something similar. Uh, so I've got that one, but we're not allergic to nuts, so we're, we're fine. So we're actually gonna use this peanut oil. And I just wanted to show you the box that I got. So this is the box, so it's called the veg box. It'll be the opposite way round on the camera. Um, and in it are all these little books. So there's all these little books and they all have, like, I'll take the lid off so you can see. And they have, look, it looks like a little crate. It's so cute. It looks like that. It's really cute. And it has like pumpkins and like radishes and like as, as little bookmark things. They're so cute. So you just go, so if say you want to make something with tomatoes, you just go and look for the tomato back here. There's a tomato. And you just look for the tomato and then it has tomato and sweet corn recipes in that little book. In this little book, it has carrots and leek recipes. So anything with carrots and leeks is in this little book. And it's all vegetables. So it's for everything that I'm growing in my polytunnel, basically. And it's really great and really thoughtful little gift. I really loved it. When I opened it, I was like, oh, wow, I've never seen anything like that. It's really cute. So this will get well used. So this recipe that we're doing today is the first recipe out of this um, little crate and the first recipe out of this book. So I'm just trying to keep it clean at the moment. It's very difficult in the kitchen to keep your recipes clean. So each time the book keeps shut and the only thing that I don't like about it is that if you press the pages too hard, they, they break, they, they break, look, they break. So you've got to be kept gentle with it and not press the pages down so it just keeps shutting. So that's the only downfall. But anyway, I really love it, it's great. So I'm gonna be making many recipes. Sorry, my nose is really running from the old um, relish that I'm making here. Anyway, so what we need to do now, so we've got all of that. So we're gonna be using a teaspoon of this and we need some of these, a pinch of these saffron threads to give it a nice color, I think that is. And so you're supposed to grate the ginger, but I'm about to chop it into small pieces. And then some salt and pepper. So what we're gonna do now, so we've done all that prep. So now we're gonna heat the ground nut oil in a large frying pan, add the onions, the garlic and the saffron, salt and pepper, chili paste and grated ginger and cook for 10 minutes. All right, hold on, heat the oil in large, so that's the doodahs. Drain the carrots and place them in a shallow dish or bowl. So you don't actually cook the carrots. You just cook everything else. Right, so the carrots we do not cook. So what we're going to be doing is using this bowl here, because it says cut the carrots um, into sticks or whatever. Well, I've roughly done that. Heat the groundnut oil in a large frying pan. Add the onion and all of the other bits and cook for 10 minutes. Then drain the carrots and place them in a shallow dish or bowl. Well, we've already drained our carrots. We've already cut them up. And place them in a shallow dish or bowl. Pour over the hot oil and spices and leave to marinate in a cool place for one to two days. Okay, so this is will not be eaten for a couple of days. And what I'll do is make another little, little video. So look out for that. Um, just to show you the finished product and probably have it with some some food with it. 
like some cold meat or something like that. Anyway, let's light the cooker now because we need to cook these other bits and bobs. So we'll light the cooker. Oh, light the cooker. Stay on. Right, so we're just going to heat up the oil first. So we're going to use all this oil. So this is 250 mils of oil. Oh, it might take a while to come out of the bowl. Because this is sort of like that drizzling oil that you don't usually use all of it. But we're using all of it for this recipe. Oh my god, I might be here for a couple of days. Because it's only a drizzle oil. I don't know if I can get this bit off. Make the process and you hit a plane. Like every time I do videos, there's always a plane. Ah, that's it. I've got that off now, so this will be a much quicker process. There we are. Right, good. Right. Mm, it smells like peanuts. Yeah, that is definitely going to be like peanut smell. Right, good. We're going to give it some more flavour. So while we're waiting for that, we'll open this little thing because this is brand new. I only bought this the other day. I'll take that bit off. All these little bits of plastic are a pain in the bum. Let's have a sniff of this without sniffing it up my nose. Oh, that smells nice. I like all them spices. I love those. I mean, you could just use the paste, but I'm not very really fond of like really hot things, and I prefer like all these mixed spices myself. It looks really good. I don't know if you can see that. That looks really good. You see that? That looks good. You can actually see all the seeds and everything in there. Anyway, so we're waiting for the oil to heat up. Oh, come on, let's go. I've been dying to make this, you know, for so long now. I just haven't got round to it. So with the saffron, we don't get much saffron, do you? A little amount of saffron. You can see that. I think I'm hopefully looking at the right end of the camera today. Always seems to be looking at the wrong end. So I'm looking at myself. I can see myself. So I'm probably not looking directly at you. Whereas cameras are better because you're looking directly at the camera. Whereas phones, it's really difficult because when you turn them around like I have, everything's opposite. That's the first thing, it's opposite. The writing's all back to front, unless you've got a camera face around the other way, but then you can't see yourself and you can't see if everything's in focus. You can't see what you're doing. Is it all like, can people see what you're doing? <laughs> so you have to do it this way around, but then you get this um, sort of opposite weirdness going on. Anyway, let's put the onions in first. So here we go. This is going to smell really nice in a minute. So I'm going to cook all this for 10 minutes, so it's quite a while, isn't it? I think we might just pop it all in together, actually. Let's do it all at once, so it all cooks together at the same time. There we are. There we are. Lovely. Nice. Right, now we need a teaspoon of this mixed spices. Teaspoon, just put them in. And you just need a few strands of your, you're going to get a few strands anyway. Oop, won't use that many. Ooh. Probably that many of do. I think that's just mainly for colour and then a bit of salt and pepper. A couple of pinches of pepper there. I won't put much salt in because we're not very good. We don't like salt very much. Well, I'll need to grind up some more salt. I like grinding my own Himalayan salt and I like grinding my own peppercorns. So I will do some more right now. I've got a massive pot of Himalayan salt. It's huge. It lasts me for quite a while, I think. Oh, that smells wonderful. So we're going to let this cook on a low heat. Not 
Ten minutes. It's quite a while. So it's like quarter past three. Wow. So they're all infused together. So while that's cooking, we'll just tip our carrots in this bowl. Right. So we just lay them in the bottom and then you're just going to pour this hot oil mixture on the top and that's it and then you're just going to leave it in your kitchen covered up for a couple of days um, and then you can start eating it and then i think what i might do is put it in a jar um, and eat it as a relish you know like as you eat relishes they come out of jars normally so i will put it in a jar once it's cold because I've got loads of jars, because I keep all my jars for, for um, cooking things, uh, making jams and stuff like that, and mayo and all that. Right, that's wonderful. Anyway, we'll be back in a minute when it's done. So 10 minutes time, I'll come back, okay? Hello again, Sue back from Sue's Dog brought my kitchen today. And I've just been stirring this um, concoction here of the onions, garlic, uh, saffron, and some mixed spices. And it's all done now, so with the oil, and we're gonna pour it over our carrots now, okay? So we're just gonna, I don't think you disturb them, you just pour it over the top. Uh, like so. Just be careful when you do this bit, you don't burn yourself. Alright. Oh, it smells amazing. Wow, you can smell the saffron. Saffron's got a lovely, delicate taste, by the way. I don't know if you've ever tasted saffron. I think it's a lovely herb. Whoa, spice. Oh, ooh. I can feel the heat coming off this the pan. It's really heavy pan. Very hard to hold with one hand, by the way. <laughs> I'm leaning it on the bowl. I can feel the heat coming off it. I don't want to waste any of the bits. I'll make sure I get them all. There. Very heavy. Oh. So I'm just going to spread that over the top of the carrot so it's evenly distributed. And then all we're going to do is just leave this in the kitchen. Just squidge it down. So it can all infuse into a beautiful, hopefully, relish. So this is the carrot relish. Made with our very own tiny, tiny ball carrots. First crop of carrots we've ever grown here at the Dolbrog Mife. So, woohoo! So I'm really pleased. And I've done it. It's taken me ages to get round to doing this, but I had to do it today because the carrots, you know, I picked them a couple of weeks ago and I put them in the fridge. Now you can see that video um, when I picked them. And I never got back to them because there's always something else that comes along. That you have to do. So today I took time out of my schedule to do this because I thought this is really really important because I do not want to waste my carrots, my very first crop of tiny little carrots. So we didn't get that many carrots out of that crop but it was only a little tiny crop, uh, probably about the size of this table actually is the how many carrots I've done. Um, and I, you know everything that I'm doing in oh, I'm not keep repeating myself but everything I'm doing in the poly tunnel is an experiment to see how things grow and look at that, that oh, I don't know if you can see I don't really want to tip it that much anyway the oil's in there and now I'm just going to put a plate over the top and then I'm just going to leave it I'm not going to fiddle with it and that's it that's it it's done 
So I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, <laughs> please give me a like and a thumbs up and I hope this comes out this video because oh, I had trouble with my camera and it wouldn't work so oh, I'm, I'm still using my phone so I'm going to have to figure out what's wrong with my camera. Anyway, so this is done. This is the carrot relish. We'll come back in a couple of days or a few days once I think it's all right and I will show you and we'll do a taste test because uh, I need to test it to see what it tastes like and um, hopefully it tastes nice I hope. Well, I don't know what we're going to eat it with yet. Mm, depends what we're cooking so we'll see. Anyway whatever it is we'll be eating some of it with it. Anyway please give me a like and a thumbs up. Tell your friends and family about my channel if you like anything that I'm doing. Please leave a comment below if there's anything you would like me to cook. Obviously, I'm not cooking that much at the moment. I'm only cooking recipes from my polytunnel. Um, once things start to go into harvest, I'm, I'm trying to just do videos for the things that I'm harvesting from the polytunnel at the moment. So. Um, be patient anybody else who's waiting for me to cook something, who's requested something. I will get back to those recipes in due course, but at the moment I'm very, very busy with these vegetarian recipes really, to try and get as many vegetarian dishes as possible because, um, well, I like vegetarian food and we do have a lot of meat and I will be doing some more meat recipes I will be making actually kebabs from scratch uh, that includes the bread that includes the actual meat because me and my partner the other week we actually done a test run for how to make donna meat um, so we're actually going to be doing that and it came out really 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 well so I'm actually going to be making that on camera but, but I don't know when I can do that yet I will let you know um, I will be putting some stuff on my community page on my YouTube channel where it says community and I will be like trying to tell you if I'm going to do a specific video or something like that I will put it up on there for you <coughs> to tell you when I'm going to be doing like um, making the kebabs or making some specific thing okay so anyway well, like I could have told you I was going to make this relish, but I haven't used my community page yet, so I will start using it. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon in the next video of Sue's Dog Brought My Kitchen instead of Garden. Okay, see you again soon. Bye for now. Bye. I do waffle. Waffle, waffle.